Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk all about spotlights, highlights, and making your minis pop. And we're going to do it all with this awesome figure from Cult of Paint. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. The Cult of Paint guys were nice enough to reach out to myself and Mr. John Ninas about painting up a really cool set of figures from their new Kickstarter. Now everything from their Kickstarter will be linked down below. This is effectively the uh, second big expansion of their world and it features a lot of awesome elvish characters. Now John and I were given the Dark Elf and High Elf who are locked in a uh, very sort of cool action-packed duel. So you'll also see content over on Ninjon's channel. Make sure you check that out as well as he paints the High Elf. But this week we're going to talk about uh, the Dark Elf side. It's time to get evil. Now, an interesting part about painting this figure is that I wanted him to be rather cold, rather, uh, you know, sort of in shadow, but he's coming forward in the position the way the miniature set up and striking at the High Elf, who I know John is going to paint very brightly. So we got together, had a little planning session, and basically what came out is since my figure is lunging at him, I'm going to have a little spotlight on top where he's moving into the sort of angelic halo of warm light that's around the High Elf. So today, as we get painting, I'm going to teach you all about how to, how to use a sort of spotlight effect to draw attention on your miniatures, and we're going to see how we actually paint this figure up while still making him look dark and evil, even when he's in a nice bright light. Let's head over to the desk, and let's get painting. All right, so here's the figure. He's primed just in black, and uh, that is because I wanted to make sure that... Uh, I kind of knew what was going on uh, with it, be able to read it. But I then did a little bit of airbrush pre-highlight. So that's what you're looking at right now is the pre-highlight. And I'm actually not zenithaling. Zenithaling is an all over highlight assumed from above. This is not lit from above. You can still use your airbrush to do some undershading, but you need to basically move it to the direction of the light. So you can see here how the front of him, it has a little bit of light on him, whereas the back I've done in this blue tone because effectively everything on the back is going to be in a colder, bluer light. And I wanted to really understand the spheres of influence of those light and where the Terminator shadow was going to be in between them. This sort of Terminus shadow or Terminator shadow is really just the area of shadow between two lights. Anytime you have two different light sources, you have to have a shadow between it. I actually explored this in detail in an earlier video. Uh, you can find that linked up there. But today, what we're going to focus on is the light side. The, uh, so everything you see me paint here, I'm painting just within this sphere where he is lit by the warm light. Okay? So... Uh, let's start with some skin, shall we? Now, I wanted him to appear really pale. So I'm actually going to mix his skin with a lot of cold lilacs and purples in it to make sure that everything uh, stays, you know, very... not dead. He's not undead or anything. But there is a sort of coldness and otherworldliness and evil alienness to him. And by incorporating in those colder elements into the skin, we make the figure feel more unnatural. So what I do is slowly build this up. Now I am still using some normal skin tones uh, in that sort of traditional range, that is to say something like a beige red, but it's always cooled by these lilac colors. At the high, at, and so what I do is you see me just kind of work and build this up very carefully and slowly over the face to make sure I'm catching it correctly, as well as the hands, but I tend to do that off screen. Again, the this will be very much a Rembrandt lighting style. The way he's lit, it's perfect for Rembrandt lighting. Uh, Rembrandt lighting is just sort of a uh, three-quarters light that casts a little bit of light on the extra side. It's how we often paint it, and it just makes faces look really interesting. Uh, and so I eventually build up into an ice yellow. Uh, here's the important part. That will add a little bit of yellow, a little bit of warmth to that final highlight of the skin while still being somewhat, just a little, cold. And this is where we're going to talk about universal highlights. 
As I make my way around the figure, I want to stay in the same color temperature for my highlights. This is something where people often go wrong. They will use different warm or cold tones to highlight different parts of the miniature. I've done earlier videos on universal highlights, and I talked about how if you want to simplify this down, you can really just grab like a bottle of sunny skin tone and go nuts highlighting every color with it. But in this case, I'm going to be shifting largely between the ice yellow and a, uh, uh, and a sunny skin tone. And the way that I use both is if I have something that's more bright, more pale, then ice yellow becomes the thing, uh, or more shiny. Whereas if I have something that's more dull or dim, uh, or in darker in base tone, then we use the, uh, the sunny skin tone, the flesh tone, basically. So uh, that way everything has this same shared warm light, and every so often I will mix those two using little bits of glazes of one or the other here or there, or tiny dots of one or the other here or there, just to keep it all in balance. All right, let's move on to the armor. This guy has a really cool armor set. It's like a sort of, uh, I don't know, formed leather armor with like these metal edges. It looks really cool. Um, so here again, I really am going to focus in with the purple. I start with the same cold lilacs. Um, but down the color scale. I'm using a lot of these Army Painter Lilacs here, and they have a really nice like six color range in the Lilacs that I really love. Um, so I, I start with those, and I then am going to build my highlights up into the warm flesh. My dark color is a very blue-purple, so it'll be effectively cold in the shadows, which is what we want here. Warm highlights, cold shadows. So I just continue to build the purple up, hitting all the areas of highlights, building up into that warm flesh tone. This will feel like it's in the same color temperature as the hair that will eventually be highlighted with ice yellow, the skin that's highlighted with ice yellow, and the metal. It'll just, because the purple itself has a little bit more warmth to it, it is mixed partly from red, and because it itself is a more dark color to start, it would not travel to the same high values. So we're staying in the same environment the same temperature for our highlights, but we're varying the exact paint we use. And so it's really just a matter of building up those purples uh, repeatedly until at the end I am working in very small amounts of pure uh, sunny skin tone. And this is my next point. When you're using these kinds of universal highlights, sometimes people will be afraid. Like, well, it's purple armor, it should never be skin tone. I disagree. Uh, if you look at a shiny red car, it's very little actual red. You'll see pinks and whites and all sorts of things like that in there. This is no different, right? In this case, the purple will have very small highlights, pronounced highlights, since it is meant to be, I'm assuming, something like satin, somewhat shiny, like a polished leather. Uh, so it will have those kind of satin reflections that will be a little more warm and won't, will actually be more like a specular highlight where it's reflecting mostly the light and less of the actual color. And so we're going to use that here to shape the purple over the figure and create those highlights. Um, by the way, one question you might have as you're watching me go through this is, Vince, how do you know where to place the highlights? And the answer is... Uh, very complicated. <laughs> but if you want the simple answer, it's at the top and the sticky outy bits, right? Which is something I talked about in a previous video on how to highlight anything. Uh, so I'm forcing the light up to the top of all of these sections, and then anytime there's a sticky outy bit, a sticky outy bit just means like a volume changes and comes back up, where the plane is now sticking out and the, it's facing more upward. That's all it is. It's sticky outy because the, the plane, as it changes, points up. All right. So with the armor roughly in place, uh, I then move on to some of the metals. This guy is real difficult to film sometimes, by the way, because his hair is covering stuff and he has his arms in the way. So I apologize if anything's being blocked at any point in time. But we move on to the metal. Here, we're going to keep it really, really, really dead simple. I am using two colors, basically a Payne's Gray and an ice yellow. That's it. I'm going to mix everything I need from these two tones. Uh, with the steel, that's all we need to do. We might knock in some reflection colors later into some of the shadows, but for now, we're going to focus on those for the steel. 
And here is the next hot tip I have for this. So once again, this is going to be, the metal's very shiny, it's very bright, so it will be in the ice yellow. We're using the high highlight color for this. But where do you place the highlights on the NMM? Well, if you did it right on your armor, then you've already mapped the NMM. Let me explain what I mean. If you have a shaft of light or an area of light on the armor, then the the sort of metal piece around the edge needs to have the highlight in the same place. So they create a line. Light travels in shafts, in lines of light. And so we would expect that light to be in the same place. And so as I build up, adding more and more and more ice yellow until eventually at the very highest highlight, those small specular highlights, I include a little tiny dot of that ice yellow in there. Again, going to the pure color for the highest highlights. Um, and after, and so basically I line all of the primary highlights up with the primary highlights on the leather. The difference with metals is that they are so shiny, they also have bounce lights. So you'll notice in all of this metal, I have these sort of secondary reflections, usually off in other places, kind of as kind of opposite to the highlights. And I do not build those up as much. I still include, obviously, some ice yellow. That's my highlight tone. But I never, in those secondary bounce lights, go all the way to pure ice yellow. Okay, so uh, with that metal kind of out of the way, honestly, that's most of the figure. You'll notice a few times in here, by the way, that there's jumps in what's happening. Like, I did the hair off camera. Um, the hair is painted as per my black hair video, exact same thing. Again, it was just tenebrous gray built up through ice yellow um, and then creating that sort of halo spotlight effect on the top of his head. And really that I was just mapping off of what I had done with the airbrush. That was very simple. Um, so it's bringing it to all the sticky outy bits of the hair that would catch light, making sure the one that's on top of his head is the absolute brightest. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about hair more in some future videos. Uh, I touch a couple other final things here, like the belt. That's very simple. Yet again, I mix in a little bit of uh, green into uh, the tenebrous gray and then highlight up here with the warm flesh tone. Why the warm flesh tone? Because again, this is a darker base color. It's a fairly matte material. Hence, it's not going to be as uh, bright. So we, it's a neutral element, it's in the middle. We just want a dark area separating it with a little bit of texture to give it some life and show we paid some attention to it. We're not gonna focus in super high on these details. So you'll notice one thing I did not cover with you was the scale mail. I didn't paint the scale mail on, uh, in this video for a very important reason. I want you to come back next week. This video is, or this, this painting this guy is actually going to be three videos. I know I'm being very excessive here, but I am taking a long time to paint this because I want to do a good job for the Call to Paint guys. They're awesome. Andy and Henry are like really, truly amazing people, and I want to make sure I give them a good fig. But here's an important note. One of the most common things I see people do wrong, and one of the most common questions I get is how to paint non-metallic metal over a varied surface like scale mail. So come back and join me next week, and we are going to deep dive into how exactly you paint scale mail and do that varied non-metallic you see here. So this is what he looks like right now. All of the warm area, the highlight is done. Like, from a certain angle, the fig looks done. <laughs> from any other angle, it is very obvious he is not, because nothing outside of that highlighted sphere is actually painted. So... Come join me next week and learn about scale mail, and then we'll turn after that to the cold side and how we use different uh, cold environmental tones to highlight from there. So with that, uh, I'll say thank you very much. If you liked this, give it a like. Don't forget to check out the Cult of Paint Kickstarter. The link and all the information is down in the description below. If you're into super cool elf uh, figures that you want to grab, for your own uh, personal collection get painting. These are so high quality and I had an amazing time painting it. Would recommend. Uh, so check out all those links down there. And hey, while you're down there, why not hit up some of the affiliate links we've got down there. You can pick up your hobby supplies. Doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money and helps give a kickback to the channel. Uh, there's also, of course, uh, our merch store down there and our Patreon. 
focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. If you've got any questions about what I did here with this figure so far, drop those down there. I always answer every question that's asked. But as always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.